Well, welcome everyone to this latest instalment of our Unity Profiles series for the Friends Room. And we're very pleased this time around to welcome onto Unity Profiles Pat Hickman. Now, Pat is a much loved and much respected person in Unity. She's been involved in Unity for many, many years. And uh, she's done a lot of Unity teaching, uh, but she's also involved herself in Unity services and Unity retreats. A well-known face, uh, and as I say, held in great uh, affection by people all around the country who've come to retreats or attended services. She began her life in the north of England. In the first uh, instalment of our Unity series, uh, she is going to talk about uh, her life in the north of England as Unity came into her experience and uh, she developed her ideas and her uh, links with the Unity Movement. And in the second uh, programme, which we'll be um, putting on the Friends Room uh, later in the year, uh, she talks more about Unity ideas and uh, her, her personal approach to Unity. Pat is interviewed by Jane Goff and this will be the last time that Jane will be um, helping us on the Friends Room because as many of you may know, Jane is now leaving Unity. And so we say goodbye to Jane and particularly say goodbye to her as a, a, a wonderful interviewer uh, for the Friends Room. So we do hope that you enjoy this programme. Uh, I certainly enjoyed uh, making it uh, and I hope uh, and know that uh, Pat's essential spirit comes across uh, beautifully. So enjoy it. Hi Pat and welcome to Unity Profiles. Uh, although it seems strange my no longer being uh, a member of Unity staff, um, but it's wonderful to see you and to greet you on this day. And I just thought we could start by just talking a bit about your personal background, Pat. Well, the personal background really started that when I was a, a baby, when I was born, mm. because I'm a twin, and <clears throat> my twin was um, well, she was she was she was really di dying. Mm. And my mother had always been with the in unity, but in those days, in it was really came under the heading of New Thought. Mm -hmm. And she'd uh, been a Christian scientist and didn't agree with all the things, and so she became interested in New Thought, which covered many, many mm. uh, um, things. And uh, she thought, I'd better just write a letter to unity. And so she did. And she went to the post box and posted it. And when she got back from the post box, there was a change. Mm. My sister was, there was signs that she was going to be all right. Amazing. So that's really when it started. <clears throat> and then after that, my mother used to have uh, We Wisdom. Mm. And that used to come and we used to read We Wisdom. And then during the war, you, we didn't have We Wisdom because mm. it was the shipping it over to England mm, and stopped, we yeah. stopped really and um, we didn't really have um, um, the Unity magazine either mm. now and again I think it appeared however the, we would also we just went to Christian Science a little bit as well mm. and Church of England and <laughs> my father was a Swedenborgian which of course is Emmanuel Swedenborg mm. And uh, <clears throat> later on, I went. We went to a convent. So really, we sort of um, experienced different kinds yeah. of ways yeah. of thinking. And <clears throat> my father wasn't very keen on um, Christian Science, mm. uh, and uh, so we just sort of let it be. But on a Sunday, it used to be now and again, well, nearly every Sunday, my sister and I were taken to the Swedenborgian church, and it was called the New Church, oh. in a place called Clayton Moors, <clears throat> near Accrington in Lancashire. And then, when I got older, it used to be go with Father in the morning, and then nip off to St Mary Magdalene's Church of England in an evening. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> I... I really was Church of England mm. and then I went to a Church of England training college 
and it was there I was confirmed. And then after the war, <clears throat> we started to have um, Unity magazine again, mm -hmm. and other writers as well. We, we didn't just stay just with Unity writers. Oh. And it was very, very prominent new thought in the north of England. Mm -hmm. And so when I was about 18, I started to give a few talks on mm -hmm. new thought. And uh, ever since then, I've been in mm. New Thought and then when we moved to London I went to London Unity and then when we moved to Kingston I moved to um, Maidenhead mm. and so I knew Doreen and David for a very long time mm. and they knew quite a lot of people that I knew because David used to give lectures in Manchester Okay. and yeah. so there were a number of people who were Unity and new thought mm. because mm. it was various so that's that's how i came to be in unity mm. very diverse pan so you had even as a young girl from the cradle really yeah oh yes yes the unity magazine we wisdom which of course is no longer hasn't been in publication no, no, for no, many no, no, years no, no, no. No. but i was had the good fortune to have um copies of it it Unity Maiden's yes, Head, yes. you know, an archive oh, yes. set of, and it, it was a fantastic little magazine, but it was, and the god they talked about was the god of unity, as it were. Yeah. So it, that must have some wonderful early influences for you, Pat. Really. Yes, so yes, you, and then you have sort a period, of open-mindedness. Yes, but you have a period when you sort of um, begin to wonder mm. about various things, mm, mm. and so. Um, it wasn't really until we came to till we moved in Wormstead that I really got into Unity again. Yeah. And it was a background and it was always there. And uh, of course, we, when I lived in St Anne's, Br Brother Mandus lived there, and of course we, we used to go and see him. Mm. So it's always been there. And but when I came to London, that's when I became a teacher, mm. and I've been Unity ever since, oh, mm. and carried out his principles as well. Mm, mm. 